Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and knife collecting and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, we're going to take a look at a new Vero engineering knife. It's a slip joint this time. Very exciting. In the state of the collection, I forgot I had this. And then we're going to take a look at eight recent knife pairings of note. Just like uh, you go to a restaurant, a fine, fine restaurant, and you order your asobuco or whatever, and uh, they pair it with a wine uh, meant just for that dish. Well, we're going to take a look at uh, some recurring uh, carry combinations here recently. Uh, first, uh, before we get to any of that, though, of course, we're going to do a pocket check. Uh, always uh, the first opportunity to show off and talk about knives. Okay, so today's carry, and this is, I have to do a uh, state, a caveat here which is oftentimes my carry uh, consists of more than three knives. And I'll show that off. And, and I do have to stipulate that oftentimes I'm not actually carrying all of them. Uh, frequently, uh, I'll have one, a uh, couple on my desk of, you know, at work or wherever, and then a few along with me in my bag or in the car or something. Uh, but there's a core carry. It's usually about two or three. Um, so today's has an extra, uh, an extra knife that was there just for the appreciation uh, while I was working. But first up in my right front pocket, uh, since the past weekend when I went to Mount Vernon, I've been carrying this knife a lot. This is my uh, oldie but goodie right here. This is the Emerson CQC 13, partially serrated. This one was made in 2013, and the scales are from Vantage Point Knife Works. Vantage Point Knife Works used to go by Blades and Such. That's Tom Engelson on uh, Instagram, or it's Tom Engelson in the real world, uh, Vantage Point Knife Works on Instagram. But uh, you've heard me talk about him a lot as Blades and Such. So uh, I got uh, something else. Uh, actually, since we're talking about this, I have a little project coming up for, uh, for Tom. Mm. Oh, I put it, I already boxed it up. So I have, uh, you know, I have the four inch version of the Chris by Cold Steel. Uh, I'm going to have him make some um, micarta scales for it with the Python micarta. It's the one knife where I feel like it's really, really apropos because that's a that's a uh, sinuous and serpentine. That's the word serpentine blade. So why not have serpentine micarta? Uh, I've complained a lot about the the cheesy handle on the four inch um, Tylite Chris, but the exquisite blade. So I figured I'd have a handle made uh, to honor the excellent blade. Okay, so. This is what I was carrying today. This is just a classic. The reason I mentioned Mount Vernon, I was going to Mount Vernon with my family. We had like a perfect day uh, this past weekend. It was just really nice. Uh, even we even my wife and I even slept until almost 10. And uh, that never happens. I mean, she's usually up at six on the weekends. I'm up at like 730, something like that. Uh, so, I mean, we had like uh, just a great day and we went to Mount Vernon. And I was like, I got to bring a a clip point or a Bowie. You know, I know people have corrected me. It's not a Bowie unless it's a fixed blade and it's a quarter inch and it's almost 10 inches long, blah, blah, blah. But you know what I mean? Bowie style blade. Uh, I went through a couple, uh, but this was the one I decided on uh, because Ernest Emerson has a clip point recurve called the Patriot. And he has done a version of it with wood harvested from Mount Vernon. Uh, that's the home of our first president, George Washington. Too bad I don't have my Washington mug. That would have been uh, that would have been great. Uh, anyway, cool place to visit if you're in the area. Uh, but uh, that's what it, that's what it was today too. My fixed blade is one I've been carrying quite a bit here. Uh, this is from Josh Mason. He goes by Bright for War Knives on Instagram. This is a Quaken and a beautifully done Quaken. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce it, so I say Quaken. Uh, he says Quiken, and uh, we, we didn't quite agree on that, but that's that's all good. We do agree that this is a fantastic knife. Uh, I got this from him a few weeks back. I it's a 1095 blade. I've been using it a lot. It's it's positively razor sharp. It's a full flat ground. He he grinds it all the way down to a zero edge, 
and then grinds back the edge a bit and then puts a a very fine cutting you know relief edge on it so it's it is razor razor sharp this thing um and so i've been using it for food i'm trying to get a, a nice patina on there under a bright light right now it doesn't it just looks unclean uh but in regular light it's starting to get there it's in that awkward adolescent phase of a patina it'll get there soon though this is uh done with so far this has been uh created with pork chops eggs um what else have I cut with this? Oh, a couple of sandwiches. Uh, we went out last night. This was a, bur a burger cut through this. Unfortunately, I, I got a little food up here on this um, Turkish knot, the cord wrap there. But luckily, it's epoxied, so it came right off. No problem. Uh, I love this thing, and I can't wait for that patina to come in. It, the one thing uh, that I didn't think about before I started this patina is that he's got a beautiful maker's mark. Let me put it there. And now I'm afraid because I'm uh, with patinas. I'm like, eh, if I don't like it, I'll just polish it out. But now I'm afraid I might polish out his maker's mark. So if I put a wicked patina on this that I really like, and then after a while I want to get rid of it, which I do frequently, I might send it back to him, have him polish it, uh, and then put his maker's mark back on it. Because I'm a diva. Oh, a diva. I think as a man, I'm a diva like that. So a uh, very great knife and a very great sheath. He, he makes an excellent sheath. Uh, that is very important, as it is uh, a, a large part of the of the whole uh, fixed blade setup. All right, next up, the third knife today. And again, this was uh, this was back pocket carry uh, for a while, and then it just ended up living on my desk and getting flipped a lot. Uh, it, this is the Hadros by Civivi. This is designed by Dylan Mallory, and um, I'm a I'm a big fan of this design. I love the Warren Cliff and I would love to see this larger. I got to say, this is a, a three and a quarter inch blade, and it's a very thin handle, as you can tell from from top to bottom here. And it it's it's good. You have to embrace that that fact. You know the difference between this. Look at this. Uh, if you can't see, I'm putting the hadros on top of the CQC13, and you can fit two hadroses uh, widthwise, not widthwise, but uh, heightwise in the handle there. But uh, the hadros curls up in your fingers like right right in that sweet spot and presents the edge at, at a perfect uh position and the point as well so i mean it's it's very well designed it's just uh, a little thin at first and then you realize kind of how to hold it i like this one also because it would make uh you know where my mind always goes just for fun it would make an excellent self-defense knife too if you had to turn it around and we don't think of this little civivi as a self-defense option but if you did uh grip it with the tip down and the edge in you would be all the force would be going against the stop pin and not the lock so you'd be much more confident in not uh, cutting yourself having that blade fold on you um but also you would you would get the benefits of that uh worn cliff tip placement and the edge for sort of a you know arcing action pakal style you know i was gonna say pakal style you know it was coming up so there you go. Uh, love those three knives. Uh, great carry today. And I had a fourth thing today, a pocket item, pocket trash, as the maker himself calls it. Uh, this is the Browner by, uh, I, I have to say it like that, but this is by JB Stout. What a cool guy. He makes such incredibly cool knives. He's uh, the ones that have been within reach for me have been made by Boker, like the uh, Lateralis named after one of my favorite albums of all times. And uh, he, he names a lot of his models that way. Um, but he sent this to me after he was on the show. And what a cool gift. I mean, I, I was really uh, happy and impressed and uh, excited to get this thing. And it is not the kind of thing. You don't see pry bars and pocket tools on this channel much um, if it doesn't have a weapony uh, sort of application. And this thing I love. It's got his signature grooving there or fluting, whatever you want to call that, which to me is evocative of uh, uh, sort of art deco, kind of an earlier uh, period in design. And I don't know, this thing is just cool. It's made out of D2. It's a pry bar. You could open a package with it. You could open a beer with it. It's got this fantastically huge jimping here. Uh, just a cool little item. And I put a little bright, what is this? This is teal and bright pink uh, snake style knot on there i just learned how to do that and now i'm 
putting it on everything. I'm sure I'll be cutting it off on most things, but uh, I do like it on the Broner because uh, if I ever need it, which I haven't yet, uh, a little bit of extra grip will make me feel confident. So that was my carry today. The Emerson CQC 13 with Vantage Point Grips, uh, the Josh Mason or uh, Bright for War Quiken, the Hadros by Civivi, and the Broner, dude. It's a Broner uh, from JB Stout. All right. That is my pocket carry. What's your pocket carry? Let me know. Always interested to find out. And, uh, you know, speaking of pocket trash, and when I say pocket trash, it really actually does say pocket trash on it. Uh, speaking of pocket trash, I have something else I want to show you. Uh, but first, let me know about what you are carrying on the listener line. We just flashed up the number there. It's 724-466-4487. Leave us a message and let us know what you're carrying. Uh, right here is another piece of pocket trash. This I'm calling the dice pick. And, uh, you know, I'm into these little pokey things and, um, I, I decided I would make one myself. I had seen these before. I'm not the inventor. Uh, maybe I coined dice pick, but I'm not the inventor of putting a, a, a pick in a, in a die, but I really like it. I think it's a lot of uh, fun. It's a useful little tool to have in your pocket. I've been making, uh, well, I've made two of these, and then uh, I'm about to make a third one that's going to go out for someone who just won one during Thursday Night Knives. What use do you have for this? Of course, I think of it as a menacing little self-defense device, but actually it's got more uses. You know, you get that coffee cup from Starbucks and that little carb hole isn't big enough. Boom. You poke it with this. Uh, you are working in your shop. You got metal to scribe. Just drag it across there. Uh, you know, the possibilities are endless. What can I say? You got a, you got a pebble in your, in your shoe. You pop it out. Actually, I just saw that from, uh, from a quill video. But anyway, uh, what do you think of the dice pick? Is it nerdy? Am I just being a dork? Uh, well, at least 28 people didn't think so and tried to win one. So I'll uh, put more of these up on Thursday Night Knives. And uh, it'd be cool to get some of these out here. And now, just so you know, this dice, this die, is from a dice set that I got um, based on, what is it? Night Bef Nightmare Before Christmas. So it's Halloween-themed and skull-themed. And I showed Jim this, and he's like, Bob, you're always talking about how you don't like skulls. You don't like the skull motif. What gives? I was like, I don't know. I guess I sort of like it here, <laughs> but uh, maybe I just figured other people would too. So there it is. It's the dice pick. Let me know what you think. You want one? Well, uh, join us on Thursday Night Knives and you might win one uh, until we pick up production. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. So the next, the Nest Gentleman Junkie knife giveaway uh, during Thursday Night Knives is March 17th. Thank you, Jim. St. Patrick's Day. Oh my gosh, St. Patrick's Day. Look forward to that. Uh, I used to live, uh, when I lived at 30th and 3rd in uh, Manhattan, I lived two floors above a an Irish bar. It was like a very nice restaurant and an Irish bar kind of put together. And uh, oh man, it was so fun. On We lived there for about eight years. It was so fun on um, March 17th. Uh, it would be about 10 o'clock. I'd start hearing people downstairs and it would go until whenever so anyway uh check in with us on uh on saint patty's day for the next gentleman junkie giveaway not exactly sure what it's going to be but i'm thinking about it as we speak also you can download us on the podcast apps apple google iheart spotify stitcher tune in etc etc and listen to this uh when you're on the go uh also if you're interested in supporting the show you can do it on patreon uh we got different uh support tiers and uh, if you're in the top level of support, at least the current top level of support, you get entered into a monthly knife giveaway. And that's what we've been talking about. Best way to do it is to go to the Patreon page. And you do that by going to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. I'm going to repeat that very long uh, URL. That's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. A new fixed blade knife coming out from Lion Steel. Now, this is a an a, a slight upgrade, only in size uh, and actually in steel, from their very popular T5, and uh, it's a a kind of an all around 
drop point uh, outdoors blade uh, with a nice contoured handle with uh, different sort of patterns and grooves in it that are evocative of, um, what do you call it, topographical maps. And uh, so this new version, the T6, is a six inch blade and uh, they altered the handle just a little bit through, you know, stretching it. They added a little noggin knocker on the back for, I don't know, pounding intense stakes and such. Uh, comes in a Kydex sheath, but this one is in K490, uh, which is a, 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 a Bowler Udelholm, Udelholm steel, sorry, Bowler Udelholm steel. A Bowler, you know, the, the makers of the coveted M390. Uh, it's a powder metallurgy steel, and it's uh, supposed to be very wear resistant and uh, you know, very tough. So I don't know, interested to see this thing. I, I do have to say the T5 has, has piqued my interest and I have a feeling that there's one in the mail headed towards me, uh, from, a a listener that, uh, has maybe picked up on that. But, uh, if not in, in any case, I think this is a cool looking knife. I think it's, uh, sort of in, in line with the Becker knives, uh, maybe just a little more luxurious, uh, if you will. It's a, sort of an outdoor or an se kind of maybe a little more luxurious but if you look at it it's got uh, it doesn't have the full flat grind that we see in those knives i just mentioned this has more of a high saber grind um so possibly even more robust possibly even better at splitting wood in batoning i'm not sure how important that is to people i'm not sure how much people do that other than knife nerds like myself making uh making fire pits for the family um, I, 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 <laughs> I would like to have that be a retirement hobby. I'd like to become an outdoorsman and learn some of those skills and sleep outside and all of that. Uh, but to those of you out there who, who actually do, um, what do you think? What do you think is, is, uh, batoning something you do a lot to, to make kindling? Is this, is this something that's a real thing or was this invented by, uh, YouTubers? Let me know. Uh, and, and I hope to get some, uh, some comments uh, be respectful uh please uh, i i'm i'm fully admitting my noobishness with outdoors i think it's fun to baton but i i'm pretty sure it's gratuitous uh then again with an axe i'm not sure if i personally have axe skills well enough to to make kindling quickly uh without being dangerous who knows all right anyway so that's the t6 from lion steel uh always love to see what's coming out of lion steel and and italy i don't have any of their fixed blades but i have a couple of their folders and they're exquisite all right next up vero engineering speaking of exquisite man i like his knives uh joseph vero and vero engineering they are entering the slip joint world with uh with this neuron and it it's a really really cool looking uh, knife. It looks a lot like the uh, Axon, and it's coming out. It's an exclusive coming out through um, uh, Urban EDC Supply. By the way, we have a uh, an affiliate link with them. Uh, uh, or do we? I'm sorry. Uh, so this thing comes in brass. It can patina. It, it's got four different uh, flavors of blade style. Uh, we've got... Um, uh, stone wash we've got dark stone wash and then we've got this uh grinder satin which is so nice and then there's a hand satin uh as well i i do like uh i gotta say i'm a sucker for a grinder satin indeed it is uh, coming in at 3.7 ounces which is it's heavy ish uh for such a a, a small blade it's a 2.75 inch blade but that's what you get with uh with the handle material and um I don't know. It's a special little thing, and it's not a slip joint with the with the traditional leaf spring on the back. It is a double detent, uh, as you might expect, because that way he can take advantage of his great um, flipping uh, geometry down there by the, um, you know, below the pivot. So this thing will be uh, a cool. Oh, it not will be. This is already out. So go to Urban EDC Supply and uh, see if you can enjoy this one. Uh, or if it's, it might be getting snapped up pretty quickly, but what a damn cool knife, Joseph Vero making some really cool things. And you can see here in this picture, now that I'm looking at it, this does have the updated clip where the ramp is toned down and, uh, reducing hots, the hot spot that, that could be, uh, present there. All right. Good to see Joseph Vero always keeping up and doing awesome, cool stuff. Uh, thank you, sir, for enriching the knife world. Okay. Coming up. I forgot I had this. 
in the state of the collection and eight recent knife pairings of note coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. I was digging through the closet that we have with the all the all the storable apocalyptic stuff. And I had this bag uh, and uh, it's a bag I used to keep knives in way back when I could keep my knife collection in a small leather bag. And I pulled this out. I forgot I had this. This is a kukri uh, made in India. This is a uh, it says India on it. I'm not sure if it's just a knockoff or what. This is a Bud K uh, Indian made kukri from the 80s that my good friend Mike bought years ago. And this was one of his prize knives. It is as dull as a butter knife. I got to say, I am going to take this out back now that I've uh, rediscovered. I'm going to take it out back and put a convex edge on it with my grinder. Um, and we'll see what, what kind of steel this is, but it, it does have the Buffalo horn handle and it's got the brass fittings. Uh, this is a little ham fisted. Uh, the handle is very comfortable. It's extremely solid. And I am really happy I discovered this because I, it's not a fine kukri, uh, but it does have sentimental value. And I want to make it work. I want to I want to get it razor sharp. See if I can do that. That's sort of a challenge. And then use it as a uh, outdoor knife or just as a you know just hang it on the wall. But I'm very happy to have found this. And I totally forgot I had this. And it's uh, it's high quality. You know the one that I have from Nepal that my parents got me is awesome. Uh, but this area right here is kind of painful to the hand. So if I had to use it. It would work great, except it would uh, it would damage my hand a little bit. So I'm happy to have this thing, happy to have rediscovered it. And uh, we'll see what the edge is like once I take it out, take it out back uh, behind the shed and sharpen it up a little bit. All right. Next up, I just rediscovered this. This is a NATO military out the front, quote unquote, NATO military out the front tourist stiletto this one from france but you could get these all over europe in the 80s and probably the 90s this uh my parents went on a trip to france in 1988 and i was like get me a switchblade <laughs> uh and they did there because my parents are awesome and uh they're mild-mannered you wouldn't expect them to be the type that would uh, be into smuggling automatic knives into the states but they did and uh, so this thing has incredible action. This has never, ever, ever failed. You can make it fail by, you know, doing that and getting it off its track. But on its own, unlike my Microtex, unlike my $350 Microtrek Troodon, this, this cheap tourist piece, this NATO military knife has never, ever failed. So, uh, you know, what can I say? And this thing for years and years and years was my letter opener back in the day we used to receive letters in the mail and you would open it and you would choose your favorite knife to open it and this one was a dedicated letter opener for many years and then the whole letter thing kind of dropped off and bills got started getting paid online and people started writing on email and then they just stopped writing all together and this went into retirement but anyway, I uh, just rediscovered it and it's finding it's found its way back into my collection. It's actually, you know, in my knife case now uh, with some other automatic knives. So I'm glad I found these two knives. They uh, brought back some memories for sure. And um, if you've been a knife uh, junkie slash collector slash uh, person like me for a long time, it's really kind of cool to uh, dig these things out and and have them be like journal entries and remember, oh yeah, I remember when Mike got this and I wanted it so badly. And here I am, you know, here we are uh, 35 years later and it's mine. <laughs> wow. Funny how that works. All right. So let's take a look at some knife pairings. Now it's an important sort of um, consideration. You're getting ready in the, uh, you know, before work or before whatever you're doing on the day, you're thinking about what you're going to wear Footwear is always important for me. You know, like, what am I going to be? Uh, what's what's the walking going to be like? Uh, uh, 
you know, jeans. Am I, am I wearing jeans? Do I have a jacket? Do I have a jacket? That's usually an important thing because that means an extra knife. Uh, but let's just talk about what we're going to wear and carry on our person. Uh, I have been in the fixed blade and uh, fixed blade on the hip and one in the right pocket mode for a long time now. Um, months and months now. I have not been carrying slip joints. And on the whole, I have not been carrying a small um, sheeple friendly knife, if you will, or a small fifth pocket knife. Uh, I've been in phases where I've carried both a slip joint and a small fifth pocket folder or, you know, that kind of that kind of combo. Right now, it's just it's just the front right pocket. So some sort of large folder and a fixed blade. So these are the ones that have been I've been kind of coming back to a lot. And that doesn't mean that these knives can't switch around, but generally they land where I'm going to show you because blade style contrast is important to me. So you're not going to see me carrying a Warncliffe fixed blade and a Warncliffe folder. Um, I talk about that a lot. It's just a nerdy preference for me. It has no basis in practicality. Well, maybe it does, but uh, it's just a taste thing. Let's, let's say that. Okay, first up, uh, featuring two of my absolute very favorites. Uh, first up is the Fixed Blade, and that is the Voodoo by Kramer Custom Knives. This is made by Eric Kramer in Arizona, and man alive, everything about this is refined and perfect. This is, this I gotta say, is the Fixed Blade I come back to most often. It is the most easy to carry because of that thin handle but it's got a full four finger grip handle and it's nicely rounded to to fit <laughs> to accommodate the love handles and the ribs and everything else uh, that i have on my sides this blade this trailing point blade is exquisite it is very thin uh, very hollow ground very sharp and very useful not just for yes you look at it it looks like a weapon it is double-edged at my request and of that top edge is much more obtuse better for uh, pressure cuts and gouging and gashing than it is for slicing or slashing like this front is uh, but it's useful nonetheless uh, as a utility knife uh, as well now i wouldn't press this into hard use like uh, you know i wouldn't do this for t with i wouldn't do too much woodworking with this though you could make a wicked uh, a wicked feather stick if you stay close here it is quite thin it is quite thin and it is not intended for that kind of chore, but it, I have no doubt it could take it. This is 154 CM. And I got to say, Eric Kramer, you got to check him out. Kramer Custom Knives uh, on, on uh, Instagram. His knives are just so, mm, so well done, so well ground and thin and purpose driven. Uh, and, and that purpose is usually tactical. He's got a lot of those kind of people who friends and fans who use those kind of knives, but they all have a practical use and application. They're, they're all they're not just tools of mayhem. OK, next up is the Hinderer Knives, Rick Hinderer Knives, to be specific, uh, XM18 Triway DLT exclusive no choil worn cliff. That's right. I'm not going to repeat that. This is so cool. This is such a great knife. This is uh, one I always brag about the fact that I dropped it on the tip, but had Jared Neve rescue it and put a wicked edge on there, too. Uh, it's very sharp. It's as sharp as it can be with its axe-like uh, primary grind. Now, this is a knife I've considered sending off for regrind. I do worry that the regrind shortens the blade ever so slightly. I think that's a silly worry. I think I think if I were to regrind it, it would certainly come out much shorter. But if I were to send it uh, to Razor Edge or BGM or one of those guys, uh, it'd be perfect, you know. And this would really benefit from that, though. Um, right now, it is extremely sharp. It's 20 CV. Oh no, M M390. It's very sharp. It'll do the trick. It's just not like this one, so thin and slicey. So this contrast here works for me, and this is the kind of thing I go for frequently. You got the straight edge Warncliffe with the point, and then you have the um, the nice bellied double edged upswept. He calls it a Persian, I call it a clip point. Um, I guess he made it, so we'll go with Persian. This is a great combo for me, and this is one that I've been I've been going with a lot recently. Now this one has gotten switched out with the 
with the eclipse tanto as well because you've got you've got uh, two straight edges on that and then a curved edge here okay that's combo number one with some classics and some beauties next up another american combo that i love fixed blade is the stroop knives tu2 uh again you're gonna see on most of these i have a discrete carry concepts clip these I, i've gone through so many different clips and to me, these are my absolute favorite, and these are the best. To me, they're very, very springy, very stout. They hold on to, you don't need to engage your belt. They do hold on to your, um, the seam of your pants very well. And man, they're just awesome. And I like them better than the Ulti Clips. The Ulti Clips will do in a pinch. I have a few of them, but something about those, they're a little bit less user friendly to me. All right, so this is the Stroop Knives TU2, Tactical Use 2. You'll see it has uh, combo red-black, which makes it look maroon. You know, I love that. This was a gift from my wife for Christmas 2021, and she had my logo engraved in there. It's kind of hard to see, but my logo is engraved on there. And uh, this is a four and a quarter inch bladed knife. It's got sort of a sax look to me and this ergonomic handle is man it just melts into the hand this is the part of the process that is automated they have a cnc machine that makes handle scales they have the design and the contours of that handle scale so perfectly dialed in it works great in the saber grip or in a filipino grip or in a reverse grip and let's talk about it in reverse grip reverse grip you have this thumb ramp thing bird's beak here and it aids in drawing it especially uh, because i draw it like this in reverse grip you have the the bird's beak here that grabs onto your finger helps you draw it and then you have a little swale on the top where your thumb nestles in nicely uh when you're using it in reverse grip like this all of this leads me to believe that this is going to be a not so comfortable to wear in the waistband knife. However, it is. It is incredibly comfortable. Something about the angle of this marries up with my ribs. Like I was afraid that this whole package was going to be too long for uh, putting in the waistband here. And it just isn't. It just works really well. This um, something about this handle, though it is longer than other handles that I carry in the waistband, like like this Voodoo, more voluminous uh, and longer. It still fits nicely. Uh, even when I sit in the car, it doesn't like poke the ribs or anything. And that's a big part of a small fixed blade knife for me is, you know, am I really going to carry it? Is it comfortable enough to carry? Um, you know, some knives like my felony stop, I love that knife by tops, but it's fat, you know, in the handle, the handle, it's like three quarters of an inch fat. And sometimes I, it's just too much. And so I'm less likely to carry it. So when I'm looking for a fixed blade knife that I'm going to carry, that's something I look for. Rounded off handle, something shorter uh, so that it doesn't poke me because of how I like to carry. This one doesn't have any of that. And yet uh, Chris Stroop designed a handle that not only works perfectly in hand, but works perfectly in the waistband. So Stroop Knives TU2. Oh, did I mention it has an exquisitely sharp 1095 blade? Oh, yeah, it has a blade as well. And as you can see, it is a pretty stout... Um, what do you call it? It's a pretty stout saber ground blade. That means it's flat ground halfway up the blade or so. And very nice sturdy tip. This one was developed for thrusting, for stabbing. And uh, I can see how. And that triangular cross section would be kind of devastating, got to say. All right. Great sheath, too. Putting that down been pairing this with another american classic but a little bit older the vcep from george knives less george this has been one of my favorite folding designs of forever i just absolutely love the vcep and the rock eye from from whence it came and then the rock eye that uh protech has taken this in a, a production uh direction so everything about this knife is perfect to me i gotta say everything about this knife is perfect it has uh no uh, insert doesn't need it 
perfectly engineered tolerances, super tight. It's got this buttery wet glass on glass feel to the um, to the pivot, sometimes called hydraulic. But this one doesn't feel this one to me feels like wet glass on glass. Like you have two plates and there's oil in the middle and it's just buttery smooth. Look at the look at the lock bar cut out. It's so nicely chamfered here. Uh, I have knives more expensive than this that are not chamfered here and it's sharp. This thing, ah, and it cuts, it cuts like a dream. This blade is a perfect drop point. And the guy who owned this before me, a gentleman in Singapore, put a wicked edge on this thing. It is a mirror edge. It's just so sharp. This plain titanium handle with the black blade to me looks and feels in hand just so perfect. So great carry combo and something about Stroop and Les George. They go together. They were different, different services, but both combat vets designing incredible and making incredible knives so I, I like them together for that reason too i know it might be dorky but i never said i wasn't that all right next up is the drog d-r-a-u-g which is a nordic zombie a sort of zombie from nordic myths this is the rib splitter knife works drug rib splitter knife works is a guy uh I've, I've been following on instagram for a short time relatively speaking like less than a year uh, but i fell in love with this stuff immediately and then i saw this i'm always lurking around blade forums and i saw someone was selling this and actually they're they live quite close to me and i snapped it up man i couldn't believe that uh, you know it had been up for an hour or so for a very reasonable price and i was shocked no one snapped it up though i do think that people who buy fixed blades off of blade forums are more in the camp camp line i feel like uh maybe i'm wrong about that but uh i was so excited to get my hands on this this is a handmade um uh this is high carbon steel it's chisel ground and it's obviously got that pacal set up tip down edge in ground for right hand meaning the chisel uh, flat side is on the uh, if you're carrying, holding it in your left, in your right hand, the flat side is on the inside. This way you can A, control the cut better and B, it looks, you know, it, I, I think it looks better to have the, uh, the cut on the outside, the grind on the outside. And also uh, you can control the cut better, but that's in reverse. If you flip it around, I don't, I don't buy that at all. If you flip it around and it's meant for a right hand, I believe the flat side should be on the left hand side. Unlike Emerson who, who flips it around for the looks. And I think in that case, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't quite agree with that, but I agree with almost everything else they do. So, all right, there you go. There's the rib splitter drog. And I've been carrying this with the umnums on by Chris Reeve knives. Now you see, I opened it two handed. I'm not good opening this left-handed, uh, singly, uh, single-handedly. Um, beautiful hollow ground blade. I love their wedge front tanto. As a matter of fact, uh, I just, I just broke down and got a pretatu that's on its way. The pretatu is a K Max Rom design uh, made by Concept that is very influenced by this blade shape. Uh, the tanto version of the Preta 2. So I'm very excited to see how they compare. This, oh gosh, I've I wanted this knife for a long time, and then um, and then Blade Freak uh, offered it up. He put an incredible edge on it and uh, offered it up, and I bought it from him for a very reasonable price. And this this like the uh, Les George knife has that super super buttery oiled glass on on glass feel, and just a great knife. Just a beautiful, great, classic knife. Now, if you've been following me for any length of time, you know that my taste in folders has kind of veered. Uh, I've always liked classic things. Blue jeans, uh, you know, leather jackets, old cars, uh, you know, uh, flannel shirts, Chris Reeve knives. I like a lot of the new fancy stuff, but I just keep going back to these and and I'm wondering is this me just aging and becoming like uh you know 
uh, oh, they don't make them like they used to, Bob. Now get off my lawn, Bob, uh, in liking some of these classic knives. Or uh, is it's also true I got room in my heart for some for some new ones. Actually, let's move on and I'll show you that uh, before I have some sort of existential, uh, you know, examination. Uh, I I do really really like these the old classics, uh, the tried and true, the Chris Reeve knives, the the hinderer knives, but. What about these knives? Look at this. Well, I'll get to that in a second. I've been doing the fixed blade knives first. So I'm going to do this fixed blade. This is the Hogtooth Knives EDC Tanto. Now, this one also has a discrete carry concepts clip. This has the real small one that you have no hope of fitting over your belt, which I also love. This is a great sheath, too. All of these knives have great sheaths. But look at this blade. Holy mackerel. This is... Uh, Something I got after one of our viewers uh, mentioned that they had bumped into, had you know, saw uh, Matt Chase and Hogtooth Knives at the New England Knife Show and bought one of these off of him. So I hit him up immediately. Do you have any of those left? Oh, I just happen to have one with a maroon handle. Oh, my gosh. You know, so uh, it was a match. Made, you know, it was meant to happen. This is so incredibly comfortable in hand. This is probably number two on my list of most carried fixed blades. Uh, again, you see you've got a three and a half inch, very capable, uh, very, very thinly hollow ground 154 cm um, Tanto blade here with that wedge tip. But you also have a short but four finger and contoured handle. Uh, I'm sorry, not contoured in cross section, but uh, very nicely uh, formed. And then you have at the butt, at, at the... Um, pommel here very nicely rounded so that it fits really nicely in the belt or in the waistband and also gives you a great place to rest your thumb if you need this in reverse grip an outstanding knife uh, by a great maker that's matt chase of hogtooth knives he was the maker of my uh, sub hilt fighter that exquisite sub hilt fighter with damascus blade and stag handle but i was talking about Am I becoming an old fart by just liking the classics the best? Uh, but then again, I have this, and this is a new classic. This is the Monterey Bay Knives Turbo, designed by Peter Carey, who is a stalwart. No, I mean, he's a luminary of the knife world, the tactical knife world. And to get a real Peter Carey, to get a custom Peter Carey, is going to be expensive, very expensive, and difficult, very difficult. So Monterey Bay Knives teamed up with him to bring one of his designs uh, into reach. Now, he's done that before with the Rubicon and the other one that he did with Spyderco. And uh, so now he's doing it here with Monterey Bay Knives. This was from their first run when they were doing uh, titanium and carbon fiber. Now they have now they're coming out with them uh, with micarta handles, which is very exciting also. But really... Uh, to me, Peter Carey, as a custom maker, does. to me, my Carta just does not resonate with his designs, even though his designs are meant to be used and meant to be, uh, you know, have a tactical uh, design to them. I, I've really keyed into him in recent years when he's been making these very beautifully ornate uh, with materials uh, knives. So I... Uh, I'm very happy to have gotten the titanium and then to have sent it off to Knife Modders. That's uh, Lindy and Richie, the Knife Modders on the West Coast. They do incredible work. They just went full time doing this. They've been doing it for a long time, but uh, pulled up chocks and now they're they're full time with it. Just doing outstanding work. Check them out on Instagram, Knife Modders, the Knife Modders. They uh, took this kind of haphazardly um, uh, satin blade. I, I was not happy with the satin and uh acid stone washed it love that acid stone washing and then i asked for sort of a um somewhere between the statue of liberty and a dragonfly's eye green and that's what i got this beautiful green it's kind of hard to see uh in its true form against the green of this mat here maybe i always try and put something else behind it maybe this gray helps it out but just mm. The anodizing on this is so cool. And then uh, I gave them free reign with the backspacer and the, the clip. And uh, when you Windex this, the backspacer and the clip, I always say, look a bit like those images you see from the Hubble telescope, you know, of 
of galaxies and stuff, you know, these uh, galactic storms. I don't know. It's just really cool looking. Anyway, they do beautiful work. And this is uh, this is something uh, this is a prized knife for a number of reasons. I I've uh, talked with Peter Carey on the show. I've talked with uh, um, Sanford Owen on the show of Monterey Bay Knives, and I'm about to have the knife modders on the show. So uh, a lot of personal meaning in that one. But what a what a great modern knife you know modern it's very modern guys very modern so i'm not i am not the fart i'm talking about all right moving on sorry to keep using that word uh the next fixed blade oh you've seen me carry this one quite a bit this is the elvia uh, from copus designs and uh ed calderon and this is a perfect use of of my little ulti clip this tiny little sheath here. Now, for a long time, I was using this without a clip, and I had a uh, had some cord on there, and I would uh, put the cord around my belt loop on uh, nine o'clock, rest it in the waistband right in front, and it didn't fall out. And if you need it, you could just tug on it, and uh, that's fine. But I just wanted to start carrying it like this. I like it a lot with that little ulti clip. Works great. Yes, yes, you see that gorgeous wrap here done by Josh Mason, uh, Bright for War, who did this Quaken. Now, this Quaken has been getting a lot of carry recently, but not it hasn't been paired. It's been more like the tertiary knife I've been bringing along with me. So it, it has not been one that's been paired with, a, with another carry too much recently. So it's not on this particular list. But yes, you can see that gorgeous. Uh, I asked for a purple ray skin and he dyes it i assumed i assumed that that was not genuine i thought that that ray skin was 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 uh what do you call it not real i guess is what you call it uh when compared to this it it looks very different but i guess it's from a different part of the fish so he dyes this himself and he dyed it a nice purple at my request and then laced it up and um, what do you call it? Uh, epoxied it. Uh, check out Bright for War, Josh Mason, Bright for War on Instagram. Now, he just did, if you like Pakal style knives, he just did a run of four Pakal style knives that look really nice, really cool. He did two with uh, two with um, little holes so you could uh, lanyard it to your fist. And then he did one uh, with with uh, all with black G10 polished very nicely with red pins. Very cool. Check him out. And then I've been pairing, uh, pairing the Elvia, the Copus Designs Elvia, a lot with this one. This is the Tucson TS301. See, guys? This is modern. This is new. I really, really love this knife. And I also love that I don't love a lot of other Tucson knives because they have a lot. And I could see myself going down a deep, dark path with a knife company like Tucson. It just so happens that many of their designs are too many notes uh, for me personally. And, uh, you know, my aesthetic, and you know that aesthetic plays a lot uh, in, into my, into what initially draws me to a knife. Um, this one also happens to be a great user with that really high flat grind. This one is in D2. They originally came out in 14C28N, and many people uh, really laud their 14C28N. So in a way, when I got it in D2, I was like, oh, and then I realized right away, oh, Bob, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. Stop it. So I did, and now I just enjoy this thing. Uh, has a tip a little bit higher uh, than I ordinarily like. So this is not, uh, you know, my usual blade shape. I'm not so much of a... It's, it's verging on Persian, right? But I found that this knife, I use this, okay, you want, want to hear a nerdy use for this. Uh, at work, I had a whole bunch of stuff to label, and our, um, uh, our receptionist has this great <laughs> brother label maker, and uh, but some of the labels were too big to fit in the space. I had to cut them down. So I used this. I used a cardboard backing, and I used this uh, portion of this blade. So this very nice, considerable belly on the 301, TS-301. It's so thinly ground. I just used it like this whoop, whoop, and rocked it back and forth. Did it about, a not 100 times, but I did it a bunch. And it's so sharp. It just, I don't know, you're like, yeah, it's basically label tape. Yes, it is. But this thing just 
it was such a pleasure to use it for that that purpose. I've used this for a lot of other things. This one does get quite a bit of use. I've taken it to work a lot. Impressed the guys around me who actually should be carrying knives, but don't because their jobs actually require it. Uh, Bob, can you uh, remove this zip tie from this cable here? Sure, I'll get it. Uh, it's really tight. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, slipped right under there with this. Nicely reinforced tip. Boom, popped it right off. So very nice carry combination. You got uh, carbon fiber bolsters and a brown um, carbon, uh, a brown micarta sculpted pocket clip. Really cool gear pattern. Um, backspacer. Luckily, they don't do too many of these knives that uh, that really, really jump off the page at me. So uh, happy to have that one, though. All right, next up, another exercise in blade contrast. That's what all of these are. One I carry quite a bit, the JB, uh, JB Knife and Tool. I almost said JB Stout. JB Knife and Tool Ditch Pick. Now, uh, let's see. Great sheath, again. Ships with the disc. Oh, it doesn't ship with it. I put that on. Discrete carry pocket clip. Discrete carry concepts pocket clip. This one, uh, double-edged. You don't always see these double-edged. I opted for it. It was an option when I got it. I just saw that JB Knife and Tool sold a few of these, and or I should say had some of these, and some of their um, other small Pakal knife called the Sackett on Blade Forums. They sold out like that, but you can also get aftermarket uh, Jade G10 scales. I need to do that for your Sackett or for your um, Ditch Pick. Ditch, what's the Ditch about on the JB Knives? Um, knives, if they label it Ditch before whatever the name is, it means it's got this super thin blade steel it is really thin it's like steak knife thin but it's very flexible and it's very hardy they do a lot of testing with this very thin steel in their heat treat uh, to make sure that it can be pounded into uh, into two by fours and that kind of thing without without breaking and this thing is very thin so very nice knife uh, made proudly in texas kind of a self-defense bent to, to, uh, to it if you will I have no doubt you could open a box with it if need be, though. Been carrying this with the very contrasty Fox Elements. Uh, this is uh, designed. Uh, this is the MK Ultra made by Fox Knives, um, brought to you by Knight Elements. That's uh, that's Jason Knight. You know him. He's the uh, bladesmith of renown that does a lot of kukris, and um, he was a guest judge for a while on forged in fire and uh, just a great great dude he's been on this show and uh i've also talked to him in person at blade show he didn't remember me i don't think uh i had to reintroduce myself but just cool dude he's just a cool guy in general he just recently went on this big long road trip and uh, going to different knife makers and going across country and stuff and cataloged it on instagram that was a that was kind of a fun thing to watch but this is probably the only way I will have a Jason uh, Knight knife. And uh, I'm happy with it. It is the perfect pocket kukri. That is a four and a quarter inch blade. It is a half inch thick and carries like it's a smaller knife. It's a pretty big knife, but it carries like a smaller one. It is light with that titanium frame lock. It is There is no weight relief on the titanium side, but the but the micarta side is straight micarta. There are no liners. Um, and But it is very, very rigid. It's not like you're going to get any flex in that. Just a great knife on bearings with wonderful action, wonderful flipping action. But also, you can use this fuller, which is a that shaped fuller, that sort of downward bullet-shaped fuller is a signature of uh, Mr. Knight. But you can use that fuller to spidey flick it. Uh, outstanding ergonomics great work knife this this is you know it's obvious why i like it because i like these kind of tactical knives but uh even guys like um like stasa 23 uh, nick loves that knife and he's all about just knives for work and for working with them and for edc and stuff and uh you know on his videos of that knife he he readily admits it's much larger and more tactical than his taste normally um allow for but he just loved this thing 
uh, not only for the looks and the and the perform and the um, and the feel, but for the performance. And uh, I'm with him. So this is a great uh, carry. You got uh, two very differently styled blades together, uh, both very capable. And in this case, for utility, of course, you would use this knife. Neither one of them are very sheeple friendly. Um, but lately, I haven't really cared much about that. If I'm at work, I have plenty of other knives uh, I can choose from on my desk. You know, just a little slip joint here or an open L there. Um, and then out in public, I just don't find myself brandishing knives. Okay, uh, the next two carry, uh, the next two combos are uh, a little bonus. One of them is car combo. And the other one is home combo. Now, the car combo, I always have the... Um, the cold steel roach belly, that's my fixed blade, and I uh, have it wrapped in twine, and it's it's a great knife. That's in my car tucked in. But this is a this is a combo I would actually, if I had to, if I forgot knives, forgot to put them in my pocket before I left the house and I had to, you know, go into work or go into the store or whatever. Uh, chances are I'm not going to be loading up with this is what I'm gonna carry. Because these are always in the car. Okay, first up is my Victorinox fruit knife. Now, the Victorinox fruit knife you will find comes in two different sizes. This is the smaller of the two, uh, my preferred size. And I have, uh, you know, I heated the handle, bent it, um, created a little sheath for it, and wrapped it in first a, a um, just a sort of thin paracord. I think it was 250 paracord. And then, uh, and then wrapped that in jute twine. And uh, because that that first thing of paracord was still the handle is just a little thin. And I know part of the point of car of carrying one of these little fruit knives is you can drop it in your pocket totally undetected. So I, I added to its profile and to its uh, what, do you, what do they call that? Um, when you can see the see the profile of the of the knife through the pocket. Anyway, I increased that and uh, the footprint. Yeah, that's it but it's much easier to hold. And if you needed this, it'd be more, you'd be more interested in being able to hold it than anything else. So um, there's that. So this is the the one that I would do. You know, sometimes when I'm driving, this has only happened a few times, uh, but when I'm feeling sketched out uh, in the car, it doesn't happen too much, but I have done this before where I will take this cord and put it over my gear, sh <clears throat> my gear shift, which protrudes a little bit uh, out from my dash and then just kind of hang it like this off the off the shifter and it comes out so easily i'm not worried about it pulling it into second gear or anything like that but uh, i would just i just have it at the ready so that i can tug on it if some, someone reached into the car woe be it to them who reach in the car their hand is going to get sliced up uh that doesn't really happen, but road rage does happen. And usually it's not someone coming and reaching into your car. It's usually someone shooting, but uh, I don't know. I have it there just in case. Uh, story of my life, huh? All right. Next up is the folder that I keep in the car. Now, this one I keep in the car because it is um, it has a glass breaker. And that's um, the XL Enforcer. Now I'm looking at this. Did I misspell pairing? I, uh, I I do apologize, and I I hate to break the fourth wall with, uh, but I I send uh, I send text to Jim, and and Jim takes care of it. But sometimes sometimes things don't look right to me, and I know he copies and pastes what I send him because he doesn't know the name of all these knives. Uh, look at this thing though. This is the Enforcer uh, XL from Off Grid Knives. Such a damn cool knife, and he's he's muttering to himself, "Shut up, Bob." It's a, <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I know I'm not talking. I'm not blaming you, man. I'm blaming my own spelling. All right. So uh, Enforcer XL off grid knives. Holy mackerel. This thing is beefy. That's a four inch reverse tanto blade. I know I said it. It is a, a bellied worn cliff. Uh, D2 steel. Really comfortable in hand. Huge handle. And this raised pyramid texture. That is almost too much. It's almost too much. Uh, and then you have a recessed pocket clip there with the flattened screws and a giant glass breaker. So this is the car combo. If I get in the car, I drive somewhere. Oh, geez, I didn't, I didn't carry, you know, put any knives in me. 
uh, in my pockets. This is what I would carry. Look at the difference in the size of these. Jeez, oh man. Well, this one would definitely do the trick. This one is probably overkill. Uh, but a an, an excellent utility knife. Not like uh, knives are only for self-defense. Like if you have these things in the car, most likely you're using them for a lot of other things and uh, probably never ever using them for self-defense. And that's just a silly flight of, a flight of fancy. All right, last up, this is the home carry. And when I say carry, I mean, I carry it to the, to the, the table right next to the chair that I sit in uh, when I'm taking in a movie, say, in the, in the DeMarco living room. Um, always have, always, always have something in my pocket uh, even even when I'm just in my jammies, you never know when you have to jump up and do something, and then you never know if you need a knife. So always, always have something in my pocket. Um, always something light, because usually I, I'm not just chilling out in jeans at the end of the day. Uh, so this one has been getting a lot of carry recently. Uh, ever since I went on Emler's show a couple weeks back, uh, I've sort of taken this one back out and started carrying it a lot, especially because it's so light, so capable, and uh, great, you know, sweatpants carry or shorts carry or whatever you want to call it. Chill, chill gear carry. And uh, ever since I had the tip put on it, this thing uh, has teeth. It, I think it makes an excellent uh, all around knife now. I, knives without points make me a little nervous, I got to say. That's why you don't see too many cleavers around here. And this one had that sort of Santoku rounded off tip. So putting that tip there just makes me feel better about this as a knife in general. Uh, but uh, titanium frame lock, thin, very light, Spidey Chef, uh, very, very sharp is mine, and uh, riding, riding in the pocket. And then, reach across there, and then if I get up without having to jump up, then this goes in the pocket. But usually it's, it's on the this or something like it, this recently, is on the arm of my chair and gets a bit of play uh, before my wife shuts that down. And this is the Vaquero, uh, the XL Voyager Vaquero. I love this thing. And when I'm out and about with a Vaquero, because uh, when we go on walks in the woods, I'll take Vaquero quite frequently. I'll take the signature version uh, that I have with uh, with the with the signature of Lynn Thompson on the black blade. His, his signature looks like he's a third grade teacher. I love it. It's like perfect cursive on this really gnarly badass knife with, uh, with serrations. That's why I was saying I take the signature one because it's serrated. And if, um, you know, if I'm out in the woods, you know, with my, with my girls and the dog and I need that knife for whatever reason, serrations get to the point uh, a little bit quicker. But around the house, I do like this one uh, designed after the Yatagan a Turkish blade, it has the the um, benefit of that extreme deep recurve, that shearing, uh, cutting benefit of that deep recurve, but it places the point in the center line. You can tell, you know, just look at where the pivot is and the point places the point pen, uh, center line so that you can use it to great effect, just like a dagger. You know exactly where that point is at every moment. So this, this is a really ingenious blade design that... Uh, uh, a historical blade design that um, Lynn Thompson took and westernized, you know, and did a great job, great job with this thing. I love this knife and all of its, all of its brothers and cousins. And then the fixed blade carry at home is also not being carried. It is being placed next to my beverage on the uh, side table next to the chair, the master chair. And that is this right here. I've been I've been busting this out almost nightly. I love this knife. Uh, this is the Randall made model. Here I'm going to move these up a little bit. This is the Randall made model two seven. The model two is the fighting stiletto, combat stiletto, and uh, the dash seven refers to the blade length. Uh, this is the commando style handle. You can get different handles uh, on all of their knives, uh, pretty much. Uh, yeah, I think that's true. But I know that on the Model 2, the combat stiletto here, the double-edged dagger, there are a number of different uh, handle styles that you can get it with. This commando style is somewhat evocative of the Fairbairn Sykes, where it where it's symmetrical and it bows out 
for a nice uh, palm swell and then dips back in and then comes back out, flares back out on the pommel. Uh, just a really, really beautiful knife and a classic American um, bit of kit. What can I say? This is a this is a tried and true combat classic. So why not have it out next to me if uh, if I'm watching TV and never know, never know what's going to happen. So, yeah, this is the home carry recently. This is uh, I'm talking about after hours uh, during relaxation time. So let me know what your favorite uh, pairings are, what your favorite pairings are um, right here, right down below in the comments. Let me know or call the listener line 724-466-4487. And let me know, because I know a lot of you guys and gals carry more than just one because, um, you know, two is one and one is none, of course. So we got to have more than two. I know a lot of you guys carry a lot more than two. So let me know what those are. And we'll talk about it maybe on Thursday Night Knives. All right. Don't forget about Thursday Night Knives tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube. You can also check it out on Twitch or Facebook. Uh, the, yep. Facebook. And don't forget episode 300. That's pretty cool. 300 is coming up on Sunday with Brent Smith of Bald Man Knife and Tool. Uh, great, great interview with a with an awesome dude and uh, a guy that I had a chance to meet uh, whilst uh, at Blade Show. And I got a chance to check out his knives firsthand. And they are really awesome. So check out that uh, show next week and be sure to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell and we will check you out here next time. So for Jim, working his magic behind the switcher. I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast